talking about the difference between the military and the military, talking about the way the system is based upon the system. So I can't believe it. Because the debate still gets into the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court level, they don't really go through their part. They don't have any authority over the Supreme Court. And uh, so we are going to basically just say this is the strange news. Um, remember when the NLR came to the news, right? Weeks ago, I was there and um, thinking forward to last week's class about fundraising and reviewing Steve Ott's work. I realized that in our textbooks, we treat fundraising in what I call a typical old fashioned nonprofit way. Give me, you know, give me, you know, you've got money, I need money, give it to us. And that's kind of the standard approach in uh, nonprofit fundraising. It, it's still a basis of of a lot of what we do. When I teach social entrepreneurship, we put a different twist on it. We put marketing into it. We say, how can nonprofits take business principles and generate revenue and other measures of, of effectiveness barring from business? And uh, it just occurred to me tonight that when I teach a course called Marketing New Ventures, it's a shame that's not cross-listed with the MACL. Because I really think, and we talked about this last night, that if we are to be fully grounded in nonprofit management, we need to think of not just fundraising, but marketing. And I believe that's kind of a hole in the way our textbooks are written, and it's a hole in the way I had designed this course to be taught. So serendipitously, I'm at the check-in registration at Dan Pelota, and I'm talking to people at the desk. Standing behind me is Dennis, who overhears part of the conversation. I turn around, he introduces himself, and he says, well, I happen to run a marketing firm that specializes in helping nonprofits market themselves more effectively. Uh, that's the man. Come over, have lunch with me, and, and it led to this. So, Dennis, uh, without further ado, I just want to thank you for coming here and sharing your perspective with us and a little of what you're doing at SEA.com uh, for nonprofit marketing. So, I'm, please I'm, meet Dennis. I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Um, okay. So... I need to be a little distracted because I'm going to be bouncing back and forth just a little bit. Um, usually I have a, a lavalier mic on and I left it in my car, but my wife needed the car tonight. So I'm here without a car and without a lavalier mic. So I'm going to play Rockstar, okay, for the night. Um, so that, well, I'm recording this because what I do for a living is marketing. Specifically, I do marketing based around the idea of getting Google to find you. And you're going to see a lot about the power of that as we're talking. But I live every single day what I'm teaching you today. And I'm living it this very second because people all over the world can tune in. Now, so far, nobody has. But I didn't really promote this very well. Um, in fact, the only person I expect to tune in is my sister who lives in the Caribbean and owns a five-star hotel down there. Um, so, uh, a couple of things that I want to touch on, well, it's not screen share quite yet. A couple of things that I want to touch on. Uh, there's some handouts there that I gave you guys. One, probably doesn't make a whole lot of sense to a bunch of college students, but since I do a lot of speaking engagements, I'm used to handing these note papers out because nobody comes to things ready to take notes and you guys all brought computers and I feel horrible because we're in a nonprofit group most of you are probably very green-minded and I just burned two trees giving you guys handouts you're gonna throw in the garbage um, but hey at least I used a QR code so you can go find other notes from that before you throw that in the garbage go to that link uh, I would like your feedback because I'm not used to speaking to anything but business groups, so it'd be interesting to hear how a bunch of students think how I did, um, so that would be great. And also, at the bottom of this, you can put down your contact information if you'd like to continue to have further you know, emails on marketing, things like that that might help you, um, then I don't spam, but um, I'm happy to help, uh, help out in any way I can. That's really what I see my job and my mission. The last thing seems like a half duplicate of the last presentation that we had, and that's this um, brochure. We at SEO.com had a massive expectation that we were going to grow. 
and we moved into a very large space with the expectation we were going to grow. And then Google, two years ago, did something. Who's heard of um, Penguin, Panda, and Hummingbird? Do those terms mean anything to any of you when we're talking about Google? Okay, wow. We're going to be starting from ground zero today then on the power of online marketing. Google loves to be what they term googly. They like to be fun and goofy. And so when they changed their algorithms, which literally shook up the entire world of online marketing and wreaked havoc on everything we had been doing previously, they decided that something that was going to destroy entire industries would be fun to call Penguin, Panda, and Hummingbird. Um, destroy entire industries is not exactly the, the case, but we had to take a step back. And as a result, we have this extra space. We can house 75 employees in this extra space that we've got. So we decided instead of renting that out to for-profit businesses, we would rent these areas out to non-profit businesses um, at a discount or even potentially free, though the CEO of the company has to approve any discounts. But um, if any of you are involved in nonprofits, that's why I gave you the brochures because I expect that you probably are. Love to show you the space. And as part of that nonprofit outreach, as I said earlier, I do a weekly um, webinar, 8 o'clock in the morning, every Tuesday morning, um, on Google Plus. And by the end of this presentation, if you're not on Google Plus, you'll be able to find the webinars um, so that you can watch them. And uh, love to invite any of you that work with a nonprofit, as I said earlier, to come and uh, be one of the, the guests on Nonprofit Know How. There's a little teeny bit of background. Let me give you one last thing that's also an interesting tie-in to the... Um, Got to change cameras just to keep things interesting. So now I'm over here. Um, anyway, <clears throat> uh, interesting tie-in. I am that startup social entrepreneur guy he was talking about who crashed and burned and burnt up $80,000 of his family's money in the process. I invented something that absolutely should have changed the world. My product that I hold a patent on is... When you're standing on the roof, you can't tell it's there. It's connected to the hoses that are in the guy's floor. He has radiant floor heating for the winter down there. What happens is all night long, the heat runs through his floor, goes up onto his roof, runs through my panels, and radiates the heat out into deep space. He doesn't have 3,200 square feet in Prescott, Arizona, and no air conditioner. He didn't even put in ductwork for air conditioning. Went through the last summer, absolutely comfortable. And you know what it used took to power that thing? The pump uses 35 watts an hour. That's less than any one of these light bulbs right here. Okay, It should have changed the world. I couldn't get anybody to understand what I had and give me the $250,000 I needed to run it. So one of my favorite quotes is from Henry Ford. He said, if I asked my customers what they wanted, can any of you guys finish this one? They would have told me a faster horse. Okay? Well, I think I was trying to get people to understand a faster horse long before they were capable of it. On top of it, I had a building product that I rolled out in 2010. We all know what the economy was looking like in the construction world in 2010. So um, I wish the hub had been here two years ago. I might have been not teaching you about online marketing. But in the process of all of this, switch cameras again, I found that I absolutely love online marketing. I was bootstrapping a company. I had to get the word out there somehow. This guy down in Prescott, Arizona found me because of my online marketing ventures. So... Um, I fell in love with the entire concept of online marketing, how it works, and so when I had to go back and get a real job, I started working for SEO.com. Now, let's go to our presentation. There we go. 
and from the beginning. Okay. This is a presentation that um, I give. I'm going to kind of adopt. If you can't tell, this cord is just driving me nuts. It's probably driving you guys all nuts, too. Um, there we go. Um, this is a, a, a class that I give on Google+, specifically Google+. And there's a very big reason that you will start to see as we're talking about this. Literally, Google+, is not only going to change the way we do social media. Google Plus is going to change the way business in the world is done. And I'm going to explain to you why, and by the time this presentation is over, all of you will either not have understood anything I said, or you're not going to be able to sleep tonight because seeing that you guys are studying nonprofits, you have a certain desire for a world we don't live in. Am I right? This kind of a burning, you want something better? Believe it or not, that big behemoth company, Google, is going to help us create that. Let's show you how. Unfortunately, I don't have my clicker. How many of you know use hashtags, by the way, before we move on? Anyone? 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 Do you ever have a question on... <laughs> I love that! <laughs> hashtag, hashtag, that, is, have you guys seen that YouTube video? That one's classic. I love that. My, my kids think I'm nuts because I actually out hashtag my kids. And I have kids that are, my oldest son is 23. So, um, yeah, they're like, Dad, you're not supposed to hashtag. I actually, not only do I hashtag, I have a promoted hashtag. Hashtag ask the deuce. If you guys ever have any questions about online marketing at all, for any reason whatsoever, hashtag ask the deuce. I'll find it and I'll answer it. Now, most likely what I will do is ask you to join me on a hangout on air. You're going to actually see one of these later on. And I'm going to help you and I'm going to videotape it while I help you. That way, lots of other people can get help too. So, Feel free. Now, if you're camera shy, I won't make you do that, but I like to help as many people as possible. So let's go ahead and take a look at, um, I don't know why that's up there. Yeah, it's showing up there too. Hey, there we go. Okay. <clears throat> the reason the first one is called And the Last Shall Be First is when I promote this presentation to uh, business groups, I promote this presentation as having five things that you're going to learn. I tell you the fourth one, and the last one is, ha, you'll have to come to the presentation to learn it. But then the fifth one is really the first one. You'll see what that is here in a second. We're going to talk about that, which is semantic search. Anyone here heard of semantic search? Heard that term? Wow, we're going to have fun tonight. We're going to talk about why Google Plus improves ranking. We're going to talk about Google authorship and how it increases traffic. Have any of you, in doing a search, noticed in the last six to nine months that in some of those searches, there will be a little teeny picture of a person's face? You seen that? Ah, finally, some heads going, yes, yes. You are not on Google+, Plus, are you? OK. <laughs> are, are you guys on Facebook? <laughs> Twitter, you use Google+. Anyone else in the room use Google+, or am I the only one? OK. OK. Uh, Twitter. Um, Instagram. <laughs> Pinterest. Yeah. I, I love Pinterest. I, I really do. I'm that guy who loves Pinterest. I love shopping for fancy socks and wild shoes and fancy cars. It's my way of doing shopping for things that I can never afford. Um, so we're going to talk about Google authorship, which is those little, they call them rich snippets. That's that little picture that you sometimes see or sometimes you don't see, as the case may be. <laughs> we're going to talk about Google+, YouTube, and Hangouts on Air, perfection or I like to sometimes call it the trifecta. 
I've been calling it that for a long time today. I decided to look up a trifecta. Does anyone know what a trifecta is? I had no idea. It has to do with horse racing. It's when you pick first, second, and third in a race, and you win, that's winning a trifecta, which is obviously you can imagine the statistical chances of winning doing that. Well, this is, in fact, the trifecta of search. The combination of these will take you to a totally different level. And then we're going to talk to you a little bit about the simple basics of how you get started following, circling, getting found on Google+. This really is vitally important to all of your work in nonprofit organizations moving forward. Does that sound ridiculous? Far-fetched? Okay. It's all a matter of semantics. The first one, we're talking about semantic search. Who can define a sem semantics for me? And not, it's all a matter of semantics. Anybody? Anybody? Huh? The meaning behind, the meaning behind the words. The what? <laughs> I love it. We define a really difficult word with a more difficult word. <laughs> Huh? Oh, I'm going to give some, but go ahead. I'd love to see some. That is kind of semantics. Kind of not. You're going to be really clear on... I taught, I taught a group of realtors, okay, last week. And they understood semantics by the time we were done. So you're gonna you're gonna get this, and it's really it is, and we're going somewhere. It's really important. So semantics. I hope none of those realtors are watching this video right now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Multiple meanings. So that's the first thing that is semantics. So a crash can mean an auto accident. Accident. I can't even read. A drop in the stock market to attend a party without being invited, ocean waves hitting the shore, or the sound of symbols being struck together. All of those are the meanings behind the word crash. Okay? This is going somewhere, I promise, I promise. Words without meaning. <laughs> Us marketing people, we love this. Words without meaning. Cleans like a white tornado. I have no idea what a white tornado cleans like, but man, I want that product. This is my favorite one. I've actually committed this next one to memory because I, I'm explaining semantics in my work so often. Words that are a play on words. Puns. Mm -hmm. This particular one is a quote from Groucho Marx. One morning I woke up and shot an elephant in my pajamas. How he got in my pajamas, I'll never know. Thanks. I'm not nearly as funny as Groucho, apparently. Um, <clears throat> but the point is still there. All of these things, how could Google or any other search engine possibly understand this sentence about the elephant in the pajamas? Like, that's enough to crash a, a whole string of code and make it go, what? It doesn't make sense to a simplistic computer. So Google has tried to create for us what they're calling semantic search. And the intention of semantic search is to be able to start to understand more than simply just the words. So that when you search for something, those searches have more to do with what you're looking for. How many of you are on Android phones? I doubt many because I'm seeing a lot of Apple computers. Okay. <laughs> How many of you have used the Google voice search app that's on the Android? Not going into Google, you know, on, on the Android there's an actual 
You've used it? That is part of Google's way of learning more about semantics. The entire reason they wrote that piece of code was to help them understand human beings better so that they were able to give us what we're looking for. So here's my favorite, though, semantic meaning of all. What is that? Anyone? Glass half full, glass half empty, right? It's a glass half full of water. This is my own meaning of this. It's also half full of air. If that's not semantics, I'm not sure what is. Go ahead. Yeah. Yep. And and we barbecue corn and we barbecue yeah. We barbecue anything. It's a big task they're trying to undertake, isn't it? You're you're how many of you speak Spanish? Anyone in this room? Anyone at all? Nobody you do? Perfect. Help me out. See if you can actually translate this sentence. Como, 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 sino como, como, como. Como, 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 sino como, como, como. You want some help? <laughs> how do I eat the way I eat if I don't eat how I eat? Como, 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 sino como, como, como. Right? Okay. That's Spanish semantics. Brings your point dead on, okay? How are they going to pull this off? This is a huge task. How? Google Plus. I'm not kidding you. I'm dead serious. Are any of you old enough to remember Google 411 back in about 2004? Any of you old? Do you? Okay. Do you remember, any of you remember when you had to actually pay to call 411 and get a phone number? You had paid 75 cents and they just put it straight on your phone bill. And then when the phone number was wrong, they just said, <laughs> sorry. Right? Okay. That Goog411 was a service where you could call from your phone number, the phone number, 1 800 Goog411, put you into a Google computer, and it allowed you to say what you were looking for, and it would tell you the phone number. And then it simply asked you, is this correct or not? And you'd say yes or no. And it kept going if it was no, as long as you would stay on the phone until you got frustrated and hung up. The entire purpose of that was to learn. Google has come out and flat out said, the only reason we ran that massive program for free was so we could learn. Why are they the smartest company in the world? Because they never stop learning. Okay? They know what they don't know, and they're always trying to find it out. No, I do not work for Google. Okay? Let <laughs> me clear there. I just happen to like them a lot. Um, so... That is the same thing that they're doing right now with Google+. They're using that as their backbone to watch everything that is going on in a much deeper level and to learn from those human interactions what deeper meanings are. Will they get there 100%? No. But will Bing and Yahoo be able to even come close to their learning ability? No. Okay? So... I, I, I love this little one. Can you guys see what's in there? And do you know what the zeros and ones mean? No? Code? That's a, okay. Computer science people would get that one. All right. So I want to show you something really interesting here. This is a search I did two weeks ago. Uh, I went into incognito mode on um, Google Chrome. Uh, Anyone know what incognito mode is? Okay. Um, and I ran a search for Salt Lake real estate. OK? 
Okay? And this is what came up, you know, Zillow and Utah real estate and realtors.com, all these big power real estate websites came up. That's incognito. Incognito mode means Google is not taking into account my history, my Gmail account, my Google Plus account. They're just feeding back the most raw possible data. Okay? It's a great tool for people in the SEO world because we can go in there and really see the underlying of what's happening. Um, I then logged in to my SEO.com account, which I do not use for my Google Plus work. Okay? And I got exactly the same searches. Here's what's interesting. I then logged into my Dennis Deuce at Gmail account and ran the search. And here's one of those rich snippets. And it's me. And it's a post that I did about I reshared something that was impressive about Google Plus and or about uh, real estate and something I don't remember. It was a long time ago. And here's this other guy down here, Chase Dixon Real Estate. He's a real estate agent that I follow just because he's on Google Plus and I do a lot of trainings to a lot of real estate agents. So we're circled up and that's it. He got himself on the front page of my search simply by being active on Google Plus. Wheels are starting to turn, aren't they? Okay. This is going to get really exciting. I promise. Well, it's exciting for me anyway. Okay, so here's another one I, I did. This is a Google search, logged in as me. Similar search, Salt Lake Realtors, okay? And uh, this is the very top of it, similar things. And then, as you scroll down, congratulations, Dustin Brome. This was funny. I did the invite for this particular presentation that I was doing. I did it live. I pulled up the search while I was doing the presentation, and this guy ended up in my search right there while I'm like live on camera. And so I went back and I went, hey, congratulations, you got on my search, Dustin Brome, and I plus tagged him. And then I beat him because he's down a little further down. So there's Dustin and here's Chase Dixon, okay? All on the front page. Do you know what companies pay companies like ours, SEO.com, to do get you on the front page, oh boy, it's big money. You don't be surprised if companies that we work with that you would know the name of are paying us well over 100000 a month, okay? Most smaller companies are five to 10000 a month. It's expensive to get on the front page. This guy and this guy aren't paying to do this. Are the wheels starting to churn for how nonprofits could benefit from this? A bit? A bit? Because you guys don't have huge budgets to pay. Okay. So we've gone over a little bit how Google Plus is affecting search. We've talked about semantic search and how Google Plus is the platform upon which Google is trying to learn and mark my words, right now, between Google and Yah and YouTube, Google holds about 85% of the search market worldwide. Okay? With what they're doing to learn semantics and semantic search, I am almost certain that within the next five years, they will go up, not down. And probably get close to 95% of all searches worldwide. Because when you can type in something and it comes back with that deeper underlying meaning of why that elephant is in your pajamas, why would you go search anywhere else? Right? You get the answer you want. That's why we go searching. So this can help you and it'll help you in a lot of ways. We'll talk about that here in a second. This is a rich snippet. This was an interesting um, search purposely it was done as a search with the intention of trying to drive rich snippets to the top because there are some people who argue that rich snippets aren't really that important and they don't really work and they don't show up and I don't know how they because I already showed you that they do but so if you do a 10 
SEO copywriting tips, well, guess what? Anybody that is going to have written a blog on that understands the value of authorship, which is what these rich snippets come from. This comes from tying your Google Plus account back to your website so that all your blog posts on your website show the picture back over here on your Google Plus account. If you're running a nonprofit and somebody is not blogging every day, you're doing something wrong. And that person, or people, as the case may be, should be blogging under their real names, and they should be tying that back to their Google Plus account so that these rich snippets come up. And this is the reason why. That was a close-up. Here's another interesting little search I did. I do a presentation called SEO is Dead, What's Next? I, I kind of find the title kind of funny since I work for an SEO company. In fact, not an SEO company, SEO.com, like the SEO company, right? Okay, but anyway, the first one up there, you can't tell on this screen, but that's one of those ones that has the little pink color behind it. You know, they paid for that, and we're all trained to ignore them, okay? And then there's mine from my LinkedIn page, and then there's this other guy. Now, are you going to click on the paid one? We already discussed that. You're going to skip it. Are you going to click on my LinkedIn, or are you going to click on this? If you don't know the name Dennis Enduce, you're going to click on the one with the picture, aren't you? We're attracted to the human face. This is like biologically ingrained in who we are as human beings. So you're going to click on this guy. doesn't matter now that you're number two if you've got a picture and the other person doesn't. So if your nonprofit is a nonprofit in the solar energy sector and you can't seem to get past the fourth position, but the blogger who's been writing about it is smart enough to connect their page to Google+, you get clicked on even though you're in the fourth position. You want to see some amazing stats? If you take out rich snippets from the equation, like 60% of people click on number one, and it decreases very quickly as you move down from there. Like, the first three are, like, I can't remember. I mean, I'm making this up off my head. I've seen the number, but it's like 85% or something like that. Okay? But the numbers totally and drastically change the minute that we see a rich snippet because we're attracted to that human face. So, blogging in conjunction with the use of a Google Plus account and authorship is really vital to trying to get your cause in front of the people that are going to support that cause financially or with their time or however the case may be. Okay? Do I have any questions on that little authorship section? Right. Yeah, go ahead. Um, it would be on your Google+. Plus. It will be pulling the data from your Google+, Plus through the uh, connection that is made verifying that the blogger Dennis and Deuce on SEO.com is in fact the same person and it's a bit of a process to do. Google needs to make sure that this does not get spammed so they do not make it easy to do. They want to make certain that the blogger Dennis and Deuce on SEO.com is in fact Dennis and Deuce on Google+. Once that verification is made then my face is pulled back over here and it's put up as the face. <laughs> it's my fault. <laughs> there's there's more to it than than that. Um I'm, I'm I can't remember for sure if I if I have a slide that pulls in this statement, but I'm gonna let me um I'm gonna pop up for a second. It's <laughs> everybody's trying to get you on Google Plus, and there there is a reason. But here's the thing: 
Google Plus, I said in the beginning, Google Plus changes things, and it changes things drastically. And here's how it changes things. Okay? We are... In, in this world, we have become very, very competitive. And whether it's a business or a nonprofit, whatever it may be, we're all in competition with somebody else. We want our nonprofit to beat Susan G. Komen. Right? Okay? Who, by the way, after that Dan Pelota presentation, I, I, my view of Susan G. Komen changed drastically because I stopped judging by how much percentage was going to their overhead and started looking at how much good they're doing. Anyway, so, yeah. But... We want to win. It's our nature. We want to win, and we're competitive. Here's the thing. If you want to really, really want to win in today's world, Google Plus changes the entire equation. And here's why. Since all that content that you're doing is influencing search, you go on Google Plus and do something you would never do on Twitter or Facebook. You go find the people that are your competitors, and you engage with them every single day. You want to be on topic with people who are going to engage on topic. You like Susan G. Komen or breast cancer, that's your thing? You get on and you talk about breast cancer with Susan G. Komen and anybody else will talk with you. If your thing is solar, you get on and you talk with the people who are competing with you in the solar world. And Google Plus is going to literally cause the statement, a rising tide raises or lifts all ships. That's what starts to happen here. Unlike Facebook, when you market on Facebook, here's the problem with marketing on Facebook. It's extremely difficult. It's horrifically offensive. Because what are you doing on Facebook? Who, who do you go on Facebook to see? My marketing company? Friends. Family. It's the backyard barbecue. Right? It is. Or the class reunion. Exactly. What about Twitter? Anyone who's on Twitter, what are you going to do on Twitter? You, you, you do. But it doesn't carry any benefit outside of Twitter. So if you're trying to market on Twitter, it becomes spammy very quickly. Okay, Because what you're trying to do on those platforms is get people who are not really that interested in solar or breast cancer or whatever it is, to come engage with your page. Because you, want, you need to sell them on that platform of Facebook. With Google+, what you're trying to do is affect this greater world that's out there. And so when you get on Google+, and you start to interact with people in your passions, those people start to interact back with you and that all is counted as, it's all indexed, okay? Which basically means Google looks at it, sees it all. The more interactions you're having on pages, the more likely your stuff is to show up on somebody else's front page, okay? So, yeah. Um, you don't. Okay. Well, no, I was getting LinkedIn to be found on Google search. Google search is not Google Plus. Those are two different things. Google Plus is kind of sort of a social platform, like LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Pinterest. Google search is like Yahoo and Bing. Okay. Um, so they are, in fact, two different... Uh, yes. Because LinkedIn is visible to the outside world. 
Facebook is visible to the outside world if you're on a business page, but if it's a friend-to-friend -friend communication, Google can't see it. Some of Twitter is indexed. Most of Twitter is not indexed, which means Google can't see it. And neither can Bing or Yahoo. It's not indexed. So what you're doing is you're going onto this platform, Google+, and you're interacting on your interests, and you're getting, by doing that, the world is starting to see, oh, Beth is an expert on, what are you an expert on, Beth? Okay. Whatever it is, we all have our areas of expertise. Okay. Believe it or not, we do. And you can establish that expertise with Google by staying on topic. We're talking about what's important to you. It's a totally different. You guys are kind of looking at me blank stared. Am I am I beating a dead horse or have you not quite got it? Which one is the blank stare? Yeah. What do you mean by that? And did you circle me? <laughs> and all you did is just start it and count? <laughs> kind of, <laughs> except this baby is a superhero that can do things that Pinterest couldn't even begin to dream of. All this camera equipment right here, everything that's going on, if you go look at the YouTube video, it, it, as soon as I hit stop broadcast at the end of this thing, it will instantly become a YouTube video on my channel. Right now, it's feeding through my YouTube channel. If you were to go to my YouTube channel, you could actually watch this video delayed by about 20 seconds, so effectively live. Okay, can Pinterest do that? <laughs> I mean, it's Google Plus is Skype and Pinterest and Facebook and Instagram and Twitter all on steroids. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, if you want to go into incognito mode, but what you're actually going to find in incognito mode is that your search is not actually as as powerful. It's not really giving you the things that you want. But you can always jump into Chrome incognito mode and no, incognito mode is instantaneous. It it's private browsing, exactly. You're not getting affected by anything from your history. There's also no cookies going on your computer and okay, we won't even go there. <laughs> Yes, still share the content, but the thing is, Google Plus is different about sharing, and we're going to get into how you share in a minute. Am I on till 9? Is that what I'm on till? Is that, is that when you guys were expecting, or am I supposed to be off stage? Okay. You guys ready? We'll be here till midnight. So we're going to get to that 
piece right there. Um, the one thing I, I just want to put out there, is anyone here concerned about um, their information getting out there? Is that running through anybody's head right now? Yeah? Okay. <laughs> they're actually a museum. Um, they came out and finally an announced that they're going to be uh, a museum. Google has decided that in an attempt to beat um, the fascination with Apple's store in New York City, they're going to create a floating museum in the middle of San Francisco. I'm not sure how those two tie together, but that's their that's why they said they're doing it. Um <laughs> leave it leave it up to those two companies to just you know <laughs> anyway. <clears throat> um as, as far as that that concern how much of this is, you know, out there what's going on when I um, was preparing for my last presentation to the Board of Realtors, I went to a database that I regularly go to called Reference USA. It's available to anyone who has a uh, library card. Just sign into the Salt Lake County Library website and run a search for Reference USA. And you can go into this database and you can find any company you can do searches, so I want all the roofing companies in Sandy. And it'll give you a list of all those roofing companies. And then you can download all this stuff as a CSV so that you can then import it into Excel. Now, you can ask for that information to be the basics, phone numbers, email addresses, those kinds of things, or detailed. When it goes detailed, it gives you the last year's filed tax returns if they are an LLC or corporation of some kind, or if they're a 501c3. If it's a sole proprietorship, it does not, because tax information of a person is not public record. Tax information of a corporation is. Okay? So, all this information is right there. Well, I ran this search trying to find realtors simply to market to them and have them come to my class. Well, guess what? Realtors have all gone through that legal course where they were told that they need to be a corporation or an LLC because they're at high risk. 1,200 people on the list from Salt Lake City that were real estate agents. These are not the companies. These are the agents. Eight did not have their gross income from last year. If you guys are worried about your data, you're living in the wrong world. Okay? There is nothing you can do. I'm not the smartest cookie out there, and I got that information, and I've taught everyone in this room how to go get that information. Okay? You want to go find out how much SEO.com grows, you can do it. Okay? For that matter, you can probably find out what Westminster made. Now it's gross revenue, that's all it tells you, but... <laughs> so, <clears throat> my point is, you, you need to step over that hurdle of, I'm worried about what the world can see. Realize, there is no privacy anymore. That's the world we live in. Big Brother, you have all read 1984, right? or at least know the reference. That's like really nothing compared to the world we live in today. It is what it is what it is. It's where we live. If you really don't want to do that, join a nonprofit that's in the middle of Africa and don't take a computer with you. Okay, and don't come back. I mean, really, that's about the only way you're going to disappear from the information. So, 
That probably was creepy, not helpful, but... <laughs> so, the trifecta is Google+, Plus, which is the overlying value here. Hangouts on Air, which is this little thing right there, and YouTube. Let me show you how these work together. Google Plus has become the outer layer of everything that is Google. In fact, how many of you have YouTube accounts but don't have Google Plus accounts? You guys haven't logged into your YouTube accounts in the last two weeks, have you? <laughs> You're in for a surprise. They just connected them. It's been a big thing. All the YouTubers are really upset with the Google Plusers. Google Plusers are like, hey, don't be upset. Come on, join our party. It's been an interesting thing on Google Plus. But anyway, they've connected the two together, YouTube and Google Plus. So when the next time you guys sign in, check me on this. But if you were to try and sign in right now, your YouTube is going to ask you if you will create a Google Plus account. It will do it politely. I believe it's three or five times. And then we'll simply do it for you. <laughs> so, um, but Google Plus has become this outer layer of everything that is Google, so that it affects search, it affects everything. Your Google Docs all tie into this. Um, basically, any Google app that you're going to use ties back into this outer layer of Google Plus. YouTube is, in fact, the second largest search engine in the world. You guys have heard that before, I assume? Right behind Google+. Plus. So if what you're trying to do is market, YouTube is a really great place to go. And with nonprofits, it's an even better place. Because how do you get somebody to donate to you? You pull up their heartstrings. And you can do that in video. But seriously, that's the bottom line. I mean, I, I've got a history of being in sales, but the reality is, even in regular sales, it's all about getting that emotional engagement. Okay? So, being able to tell your story is key to being successful as a nonprofit. Hangouts are a personal one on one or one on 10 video chat like Skype, but they're private. That's a Hangout. Any of you been in a Hangout? They're way better than Skype. You have total control. They're a little difficult to get into at first. They are. Skype rings your computer. You know what's going on. It tells you. Google, for some reason, makes it really hard to get somebody. As you could see, I couldn't get him connected. We tried like four times. He, he wasn't getting any notification that I had invited him to the Hangout on Air. <clears throat> but once you're in, <clears throat> and I do have a video on how to answer a Hangout on Air call, by the way, on YouTube, um, because it's that difficult. <laughs> but once you're in, they're way better because you can have 10 different people on there, all with their video things going on. And you have total control over your own bandwidth usage. So if the thing's starting to skip and glitch, you can turn down how much bandwidth you're pushing off of your personal computer so that it won't glitch on you. It'll just slow down things and lower the quality so you'll be a little grainy instead of getting <laughs> like that. It's really cool. I, I love Hangouts. Then the next step beyond that is what I'm doing right now. It's called a Hangout on Air. A Hangout on Air is between 1 and 10 people to infinity. We currently have three presenters. This guy right here, this guy right here, and my laptop right there. I've set up three different Google Plus accounts for the purpose of doing Hangouts on Air like this that I can bounce around between cameras. Those are the three presenters. And as many people as desire to tune in and watch can watch the Hangout on Air. Okay? They, um, when you are done with the presentation, it goes to YouTube immediately. And the entire thing is indexed by Google. Which means that if you were to run a search right now, now I'm horrible at spelling. And for some reason, my spell check wasn't working. So if you tried me on this, it may be that I spelled Westminster wrong. 
But um, if you were to run a search for Dennis Deuce, uh, what would probably come up? Dennis Deuce, Google Plus, Westminster. I'm guessing that this hangout right now did it? Oh, okay. <laughs> wow, okay. I was right. Not making things up. Because stuff is indexed live in real time. It's not sometime later. Which means that if you're trying to get the word out about something that's really important right now, you can do it through the use of Hangouts on Air. Okay, I should have changed the words on this one, but it's still important. On a YouTube channel, you should have a variety of things. Okay? Now this was to the realtors, so you don't you don't want just properties, but you also don't want only videos that are a massive sob story. Those are really important. But you also want some personality type videos. Who are the people that are in your group? Um, what are some highlights? The other day, um, I got a Facebook notification that one of my coworkers at, at SEO.com is going to be Tenardier at the um, Hale Center Theater in the spring. Tenardier, the innkeeper, Les Mis. Um, so I thought that was really cool. And I went to him and said, hey, let's do a highlight video of you. And he says, oh, that'd be so fun. He goes, I could sing some of the pieces too. And I'm like, that'd be even better. Okay? That personality stuff is really vital to making people feel engaged with you. Another thing that can be really beneficial is um, testimonial videos. Okay? And you can get those in the simplest, simplest possible way. Um, here, let me give you an example. Anyone want to be a, a guinea pig? I'm going to show you how easy this is. I just need somebody to come up here with me. Good deal. I hope I don't make him mad. <laughs> okay, give me a sec to get my phone back up. So all of us are carrying, anyone not carrying a smartphone? Flip phone, anyone? Okay. You're out, you're doing some kind of a nonprofit, you know, fundraiser, you're, um, you know, you're at some kind of an event, and somebody's just said something, you know, really nice about you or your organization. Okay. You pull out your phone, you put it on camera mode, you turn it towards yourself so you can see yourself. We're both in here. Right. You hit record. <laughs> all right. I didn't catch your name. I should have done that before I went on camera. Raphael. Raphael. Yeah. All right. Raphael. And, and this guy's big. So I hope I don't make him mad. So Raphael is here at my class that I'm giving on Google Plus at uh, Westminster. You're in the MBA program? That is correct. Good deal. Now, what do you think about the presentation so far today? Entertaining so far. <laughs> okay, how about educational? Very educational. I know a lot more than I did before. Oh, good, 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 good. I'm glad it was entertaining too. I try not to be too boring. Gotta be these days, right? Yeah. We're here for three hours, so you gotta be entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good deal. Well, thank you very much, Raphael. Now, let me ask you one thing. Do you mind if I put this up on YouTube? No, not at all. Perfect. Thanks. Yeah. That's not difficult. Most people will say yes. Now, there are those people. How many of you would say no if you knew what I was going to do right there because you don't like your face on camera? Got a few, right? There's always a few. Simple solution. Your phone also has a voice recorder. Okay? You're at that same fundraiser. You took pictures the whole day of all sorts of different people. Any of you that don't like to have your face on camera, would you feel bad about saying how much you liked my presentation? on your voice? Just, you still would? <laughs> well, at, at least the other three of that group of four were okay with it. So w those are some pretty good percentages, all right? So the point here is you can create some pretty simple video content. And believe me, I will be putting that up 
and it will go into my testimonial section, and I do this every single time I do a presentation, I get a testimonial like that. Okay? It just helps people to see, oh, this is a guy we ought to have come speak, because apparently he's entertaining and partially educational. <laughs> So you can get personality videos, testimonial videos, local events and reviews are really good. So if you've got a nonprofit that you're working with that is very locally based, unlike breast cancer, um, can anybody give me an example of something that's really a locally based nonprofit? Any of you work with one? Family Support Center. Where is that one ba based? Okay. And how big of an area do you service? Salt Lake County, okay? So you guys could do little snippet videos of events that are going on in the area, especially now, you want to take it a step further, family-based events, right? Good, positive family activities, unlike what so many of these people that are there are going to be used to, okay? So that can be a good outreach. Anybody else? It's possible. It's absolutely possible. Oh, I absolutely know what you're saying. Um, and, and, I mean, you make a good point. Why is it that Costco is the fastest growing business? MBA guide. You know why Costco is killing it? She gave you the hint. Yeah, but Walmart's good at what they do, and they're not growing nearly as fast right now. You, you can get everything, but how many of each thing can you get? Okay. Oh, don't you love that commercial? My wife and I are always... When they're sold out, they're sold out. But how many computers do they have? I mean, Best Buy across the street has 10 times as many, right? How many cameras do they have? Five? How many of any given thing? I think their max is five, isn't it? You, you, you know this business theory about why they're growing so much. It's the simplicity of choice that's been the key to their success. At least that's how they put it. When you go in there, you're not bombarded. And unfortunately, here I am talking about how great Google Plus is, but you are right about something there. You absolutely are right. Google is trying to do a lot of things and it's difficult. It's a little clunky. It's not as easy necessarily to use. So then you've got to look at it and go, is it worth it for what I'm trying to do? The answer clearly from the beginning of the presentation is, if you are in charge of trying to get the word out for your nonprofit, now if you do something else for them, then maybe it doesn't matter and you ought to be pushing on the person in your nonprofit that is in charge of marketing to go do it. But you, it is important to learn this if your job is to help get the word out there. Okay? And I happen to know a guy who can help you make it easier. When you get stuck, stuck and you don't know what to do next, on Google Plus or any other social media, ask the deuce. Okay? Seriously, I will help you if you have something you can't get done. Last week I had a lady in, I think she's in Louisiana, couldn't get a hangout on air. She could watch them, but she couldn't participate in them. And so, I got on a Hangout on Air. The video is up on YouTube. I'm not kidding you. I got on a Hangout on Air through her phone because that's the only way she could actually engage in one because her computer wasn't working. And she turned her phone around and I had like, oh, turn it down a little bit more so that I can see what you're pointing at and walked her through it and found out there was an error and they had to um, uninstall a number of pieces of software and correct a computer error. 
I am no IT guy, believe me. But they had to fix this computer error, and then they were able to go on. So when I say, I'm here and I will help you, I really mean it, okay? <laughs> there was a conversation about crowdfunding, okay? And I'm no expert on crowdfunding, um, but at the end of the day, crowdfunding, crowdsourcing is a way of marketing utilizing a larger body. And this definitely can help you. So if what you're trying to do is find volunteers for your cause, then the stuff we're going to get to in the last seven minutes um, I'm going to skip that video, is what's going to vitally help you. It's finding the people that you need to find and engaging. So I'm going to step into the very last section. It should start to answer this. Um, but what we want to be doing is, now, as you get involved, you may find you want to spend more or less time, okay? But in order to get moving with Google+, Plus, you really need to say, I'm going to dedicate 30 minutes a day to it. I'm going to do it every day. I'm going to put it in my calendar, and I'm going to figure this out. It's important. Now, if your work with whatever nonprofit you're volunteering or working with doesn't fit into this, then don't worry about it. But if you've gone, hey, this is important. I can see the benefit here. I need to learn it. Here's some key points. Um, you want to, a couple of different things, you want to go in and find people that you can follow. Find five people every day to follow. Now, who do you follow? Google Plus isn't the backyard barbecue. You're wanting to find people who have similar interests to you and people who will engage with you so that it's not a wasteland. Was it you that said that? Oh, you said that. Gray shirt instead of gray hat. I'm sorry. Um, so y there's a couple of little tricks when you're looking at somebody trying to decide, do I circle them, do I not? Now, keep in mind, when you circle someone, they, can't, they can only tell you circle them. They can't tell what circle you put them in or how many. And the beauty of circles, unlike Facebook, everything is controlled for you, what you see is controlled by the algorithms. The more you engage with someone, the more they show up in your news feed. The less you engage with someone, they start to disappear. Okay, that's all controlled by algorithm. In Google+, it's all controlled by you. So you want to use these circles. To, otherwise, you're going to be flooded with way too much information. You want to create as many circles as you can possibly think of. I have people that are in 13 different circles because they have various points of interest for me. Okay, so let's take a look at this. I'm just going to go with this first person. These are suggestions. When you go into your account, you click here. All of your controls are right here on your left-hand side of your Google+. Plus. You go into People, and it's going to give you a list of people that are suggested, people who have you in circles, people you have in circles, and discover interesting and new bizarre people. Okay, so we're going to go into find people, and I am just going to go with the very first person here, Deborah Mastoller, um, and I'm going to look at a couple of things to try and decide if she is somebody I want to engage with. The first thing I'm going to look at is, does she have a picture of her or a picture of something stupid? Okay, or even if it's just a picture of her interest, or the 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 logo of the social media, or the I mean the net the nonprofit she works for, or anything else, I want to deal with a human being. Okay, when I'm engaging here, I'm looking to engage. I'm looking to learn from you. I'm looking to teach you. It's a back and forth on Google Plus. Okay, so I'm going to look at that picture. The next one I'm going to look at is this picture right here. This one should be something more giving me an idea of their interest. So quite honestly. I'm not a big fan 
already of Deborah's second picture. But that's not a big marker for me. I'm next going to look at where she works and who she has in her circles. She has a lot of people in her circles. That's a pretty big number on Google+. And she has four people in common with me. Um, let's see. These are not people. Oh, Nelson. He's a coworker of mine. Uh, Greg, I know him, but not very well. So these are interesting. These are all Utah people. She must be from... Huh, that's weird. She must have lived in Utah at some point in time. Um, so then I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to look at her post, okay? Now one of the things that I do not want to see at all is post after post after post of the same thing being shared in different groups. That's spammy. And if she's doing it, I'm going to look at two things. I may follow her, but only because of what I do for a living. If I'm looking at her and at least the content is really good and on target, and she just has a bad habit, she doesn't know any better, well, I'm an educator in this stuff, so I may follow her with the purpose of trying to help somebody have a better experience and not get passed over. As nonprofits, just run and hide. Like, seriously, just ignore it. You guys aren't there to help these people become better at Google+, Plus, unless you have a nonprofit based around that. I'm not sure how that would work. Um, so, yeah, just kind of walk away if you, if you see that. Um, you're going to look at, you know, what is she doing? Is she resharing? Is she commenting? One of the things that you um, really want to do... When you comment on Google+, when you reshare something, when you comment, there is an unlimited number of words. Unlike Twitter, which has 140 characters, there is no limit to how much you write on Google+. Take advantage of that. You will have much more engagement the more you say. When you reshare something, if you tell your whole story about why this is important to you and how it touched your life, okay, you are far more likely to get people to actually engage with that content. And when they engage with that content, it becomes a lot more enjoyable. Okay? So, you, you want to look at that. Is she just taking something and, and doing what you would do on Twitter? Here's a cool post. I read it. Read it. Here's the link. On Google+, not cool. Okay? So, stay away from from that. Um, so yeah, you're going to go through, you're going to analyze these people, and then you're going to decide, okay, well, you know what, I, I am going to follow her, I like her, um, I'm not going to put her in friends because I don't know her, I'm going to put her in following, um, that I could see she's not an artist, um, you can see how many different things I have, so I have my co-workers here, she's not a co-worker, I have my clients, I have... Um, People in plumbing, people in solar, uh, race directors, um, people from the center, small business resources, realtors, St. George realtors, nonprofits. She's none of these. Uh, all SEO. She definitely is in the SEO realm. Now, I don't know enough about her to decide that she's going to go in SEO experts, which is another one. I haven't seen enough to see that she's re really into video marketing, so I'm going to skip that one. Um, all social media, I'm going to put her in that one. And for now, that's going to be it. Now, a couple of key ones that I have. Week's top 10. This is a really great suggestion. I Every week, I find 10 people I really like to follow. And these are across the board. Last week, I had a guy that had 40 people following him. But he was really entertaining. He did, did it well, and I liked him. Um, and then I put together a list, and I publish it, and I plus tag them. And so they get notification, hey, this guy really likes me. And now all these people that follow me and that follow them started all following each other. And I had a lot of engagement around it, which was really fun. And so there's some cool things you can, uh, you can do that way um, to start to get engagement. Because on Google+, everything is about being helpful. There's a term on Google+, called an HT or a hat tip. And my picture actually refers to that hat tip. Because this is my personal brand. And the hat tip is a way of 
giving recognition to somebody else who did something well. I like their blog posts. I like this. I like that. Okay, that's a key cultural norm within Google Plus. So there's um, that. The next thing that you want to do is you want to check out communities and engage with them. Okay, and let me show you how you do that. You're going to come in again. It's under the same point right here. All your controls are on your left hand side until Google moves them. Um, and you just drop down to communities, and then you have all the communities, and those are going to show up. If you're already joined communities, they're going to show up based on the last ones that you interacted with. Okay. Catterday. Yes, I love cats, and uh, so every Saturday I post a picture on Catterday. Okay. Now I love something else which is very specific to Google Plus, and that is Auto Awesome. Okay. On your phones, if you have an iPhone, you have to download the app. If you have an Android phone, you have this new feature called Burst. Take six shots, boom, 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 boom. You can auto load those up to Google Plus. And when you do auto load them up to Google Plus, Google Plus will turn them into this animated GIFs. That's kind of a goofy one. Some are really cool. And I just have this passion. I just think they're so fun. Why are these all dumb? <laughs> Some guy hacked this thing with. There, that water one's kind of cool. That dog, okay, I like the dog. All right, I'm sorry. This is one of my goofy little things. I like auto awesome pictures. And I literally take about 2,000 photos a week because every time I take a picture, I take six at a time. Okay, so I take a lot of pictures every week because I love auto awesome. And so not only do I put an auto or put a Catterday picture up every Saturday. I put up a auto awesome cat picture every Saturday. Um, some of the other groups that uh, would be really good, there's nonprofit news and trade. That's a good one uh, that you guys should be following. Um, one of the ones that I highly recommend right here for newbies on Google Plus, Google Plus etiquette, definitely jump into that one really, really helpful group of people. We are all in there to e either you've got really great professionals who want to make this community fantastic or you've got newbies trying to learn. Um, and it's just a fun community, great place to post questions um, if you don't want to use my promoted hashtag that is. Um, so there's a lot of different, you know, you find things that are interesting to you. I'm into, I own a Great Dane, um, so I follow the Great Dane page. This should be a little bit of who you are intermixed with specifically what you do. Yeah. Yes. 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 You can set up a page like on Facebook and you can have multiple administrators to that page and you absolutely should have that and your videos for your nonprofit should be on your page's YouTube channel which will be automatically created if you don't have one already. If you create a Google Plus it'll create the YouTube channel. If you have a YouTube channel you've never set up a Google Plus it now will automatically create that. They're interlinked now. So, but you should have a a page, and that that would be different from the way you engage personally. Okay. That answered that question. Okay. <clears throat> um, you want to respond and interact with conversations that you are already involved with. So, how do you do this? Well, you're going to get. Um, oh, why did this take it? Okay, I hung Christmas lights on the Saturday. Is that a cool auto awesome or what? <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm a geek. I'm a real dork. Yeah. Nothing like a tripod and uh, time lapse photography to make me happy. Okay, 
So how do you engage with your previous conversation? It's the bell right here. That's the thing that's going to tell you that you have something to engage with. It's going to tell you things like the circles that you need to engage with. That's a symbol that says these are, these are circles. These are people who either followed you or you followed them. That's just all that notification is. Um, you've got your communities. Okay, something happened on G plus dog park. Um, something happened on Catterday. This guy started or commented on one of my posts. Oh, okay. Well, this is awesome. This guy commented on one of my posts. So let's go see what that is. And I think that's actually the presentation we're doing right now. It is. Okay, well, this will be interesting. Hopefully you didn't say this thing totally sucks. <laughs> cool. Thank you, Dennis. Hey, no problem. Anytime, Kenneth. Don't know Kenneth, but... By the way, I, I like the hat, Kenneth. Um, black hats are awesome. Um, so I can now go in, and I won't do it right now, but believe me, tonight before I go to bed, I will go in and say, thanks, Kenneth. And then I will step a fur bit further on and say, what did you like the best about this? And try and turn this into a longer conversation. Try and get engagement with them. Okay? Um, so... The other things that you can do from the bell is you're going to get um, you're going to get reminders there. Guest lecture at uh, Westminster College starting now. Um, people, you're going to get people telling you that uh, you were mentioned in a comment. This one I actually want to bring up because I really liked this auto awesome this morning. This guy did awesome. Or yes, I have a passion. Okay, that's so awesome. So it was just a great idea. I'm like, why didn't I think of that? Because some of these experiences through normal eyes aren't that impressive, and all of a sudden they're like, oh my gosh, that's cool. Like that's not cool when you're sitting in your car. But am I right or am I right? That's actually a cool photo. Much cooler than the experience of sitting in your car in a car wash. Okay, maybe I just like auto awesome too much. Anyway, so he said thanks to me. Look, he, he named me right here. So you engage with those things. You comment back. You can plus the comments. You just go like this. And plus right there. Boom. Okay, I liked his comment. Anything you've done is in red. So that means I plus that one. I didn't plus like my own. Why would I? Um, yeah, Dennis, great comment. You're really cool. I had to do that from one of these other accounts over here. Anyway, um, sorry. Okay, we are. <laughs> wow, you want me to invite you to a hangout on air? That is the sound of a hangout on air, so. Basically, the idea here is, how, have any of you primed a uh, hand pump, water pump? Work, work, work forever. Finally, some water starts coming out, and then it gets really easy to pump, doesn't it? And what happens if you stop? You go right back to the beginning, okay? So just get involved. Do a little something every day. Have fun with it. If you're not having fun with it, I guess get out of it or ask to do so I'm not sure which. Um, let's see. This link right here, uh, oh, that's the wrong link. I am going to put the, let me show you where I'm going to put these um, notes up here and all these will be hyperlinked in there. Um, let's go to me, profile. Wow, I'm bogging down the system about now. You guys are all wanting to go, and my computer's not bringing anything up. Yeah, I'm trying to... I really want to show you this. Okay, well... Fill out the questionnaire and put your email address if you want the notes to today's presentation 
and some links, um, some other things like that. And also, if any of you work with a nonprofit that you would like me to talk with you guys about having on nonprofit know-how, we would I I would love to highlight any nonprofit that you guys are working with. So um, just let me know. And any further questions? Because I've been told I got five minutes. Thank you for laughing at my jokes today. Making me feel better. Awesome. See you later. Um, over lunch or something. Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Open up a realm of, of not of marketing that is kind of off my radar screen. I, I I'm certainly so above my technical level. So <laughs> thank you for doing it. You're welcome. And, uh, I want you back in marketing. I am happy to come back. Okay. Anytime. Okay. What I do. Thanks so much. Thank you. Stop it.